So, Jeremy, obviously, over the past few days, you've been at The Hague, where South Africa is moving a case against Israel. What do you think is the significance of this? Well, it's of enormous significance. The South African presentation, with the support of the Arab League and a number of other countries, was absolutely brilliant, legal, correct, dignified, and logical. And uh, they asked for an interim relief order, which essentially was for Israel to stop the bombardment. They've asked for an immediate decision. I don't know what immediate is in the case of the ICJ, but if the ICJ doesn't respond in some positive way to this cry South Africa has made on behalf of millions around the world, then it's the ICJ that's the loser in this. Israel didn't really offer a legal defense of their actions. How could they when they have leading politicians in Israel calling for the expulsion of 90% of the population of Gaza? When they have, in terms, said there are no innocents in Gaza, we will bomb. That fits in with the Genocide Convention. Now, obviously, you were involved in the anti-apartheid movement uh, in, for South Africa. What do you see as the parallels between being um, between that movement and this, this movement now today? Well, there's an amazing synergy about this. Uh, I was involved in the anti-apartheid movement from when I was in school. And for a long time, it was a lonely business campaigning against apartheid. It wasn't a popular cause at all, but we stuck at it. And it was the steadfastness of the people of South Africa, particularly the people of Soweto, that freed South Africa from apartheid. And when Mandela came out of prison, he said, our freedom will not be complete without the freedom of the Palestinian people. And he fulfilled his promise to go first to meet the Palestinians, and he did. And um, I think it is a testament to the South African cause and the support around the world, much older now, but the same people campaigning for Palestine. Now, obviously, the UK government is cracking down on uh, basically stopping people from showing support for Palestine. What do you make of this? Well, the British government's position is beyond appalling. They won't tell us what arms are being supplied to Israel at the present time. They won't tell us what these flights going from RAF Akrotiri to Israel are carrying. All we know is that they refuse to call for a ceasefire. And to their shame, most other MPs refuse to call for a ceasefire. And so that actually makes people complicit in this bombardment of Gaza and now the loss of probably 30,000 lives and goodness knows how many more bodies are going to be found under the rubble. Israel is conducting a ground zero operation on Gaza, destroying the mosques, the churches, any artifacts, like leveling the place in order to expel the entire population who are now in greater numbers dying from wholly preventable conditions such as diarrhea, dehydration, starvation, than are actually being killed by the bombing. This is the consequence of this appalling conflict that's going on. There must be a ceasefire now. And obviously you've been part of the Palestine Solidarity Movement for a long time. Uh, what feels different about the movement now? Much bigger, much younger, and uh, a much wider understanding of it. The day after the parliamentary vote on uh, whether or not there should be a ceasefire, which I voted for a ceasefire. I walked from the town hall in my borough back to my office, which is in Finsbury Park. It takes about 20 minutes, half hour perhaps. I was stopped the whole way by people who were not necessarily very political, weren't involved in any campaign, and just said thank you for doing the right thing.